Hey, this is Channing. And this is Leah. And you reached Vessel, Art is a Doorway. Welcome to episode 36. Hello, friends. We're so happy that you're here with us today at Vessel Art as a Doorway. In this episode, we have something very unique for you. We're covering the 2022 Design Miami. Yes, at the fair, we had the pleasure of interviewing so many interesting people who talked about the amazing and unusual artwork that they had, not just artwork, also sculpture, design pieces, and the amazing creative groundbreaking artists that they're working with to create that and I know you'll really enjoy hearing about them definitely but one thing you may be interested in is hearing how Leah recently was selected as being one of the 15 artists to work with the Los Angeles Lakers program it was a really fascinating program called in the paint Leah could you tell us a little bit more about that Yes, it's really interesting and it's fascinating because obviously the Lakers are a basketball team. What does that have to do with art? But the Lakers see themselves not just as a sports team, but also as important to culture. And the thing that really drives culture is art. And because of that, they have a special art program that they put together that they've been doing for the last couple of years. So they worked with 15 of us artists and we put together an art exhibit under the curation of Charlie Palmer. And it was really fun, it was incredible. It was a private event specifically for the players, their families, the sponsors, and other people within the Lakers organization. And it was sponsored by Lexus USA, MGM Grand, BB Go USA, and Hennessy. So it was really an amazing event. If you get a chance to look at the YouTube, you'll be able to see a few clips. Yeah, it was real fun, Leah. Uh, For myself, obviously I wasn't in the show, but really getting a chance to see some of the players up close was amazing and um, seeing the different artists and the way that they curated the space was just incredible if you get a chance I would highly recommend checking out some of the video of the event I think you'll enjoy it so now let's get into 2022 design Miami when we first came in, we stepped into a photo gallery from New York and Tokyo. And when we walked in, the gallerist showed us an incredible piece by Terumasa Ikeda. And this was a lacquer piece. It uses a special technique that the artist spent eight years developing. And it's really fascinating because he takes this ancient technique and using modern technology, takes like abalone shells and creates these beautiful mother of pearl designs that are inspired by Arabic numerals, computer screens and digital signals. And now we enter into the Nilofar Gallery based out of Milan, Italy. And we see some fantastic work from Audrey Large and also Khalid El Mays. And what we see here is Audrey Large's these phenomenal alien-like sculptures where she tries to define the liminal space between present and future. And on the other hand, we see some work by Khalid El Mays where he uses his digital animation to have an impact on some of the furniture design and creating some of these exciting explosions of colors, shapes, and materials. And next we move on to Carpenter's Workshop Gallery and the first thing we see is the stunning chandelier by Studio Drift, part of their Fragile Future series where they use real dandelion seeds to create this amazing chandelier. One of the highlights was going to the Jason Jock Gallery and seeing some of Kim Simonson's work. Yes, his work is stunning. In fact, listen in to Grace Income as she tells us more about it. Well, audience, we have a real treat for today. Uh, Today, Leah and I, we're at Art Basel, Miami, at Miami Design. And today, we have the pleasure of having Grace Income of Jason Jack Gallery. Such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Awesome, awesome, audience. So, we just came across this gallery because there's a beautiful 
ceramic artist that just comes out with some amazing work. Uh, Grace, could you tell us uh, a little bit more about this? Absolutely. The ceramic artist in question is Kim Simonson. He's a Finnish sculptor who lives up in Fiskars, Finland, where he makes all of this work by hand, emphasis on by hand. Fiskars is the same village that you might know the name of because of the orange scissors that many people buy at Office Depot from Fiskars, but it's the same village. But he's a ceramic artist who initially wanted to be a soccer player, but found his way to clay. He studied clay, ceramics, properly speaking, at a design and art school in Finland and that brought him here today. He happened upon the method of making these works, flocking these ceramic artworks by chance. And they're actually hands, they're, I mean, emphasis on, once again, hand sculpted unique objects covered in epoxy after they're fired and flocked with nylon. And the nylon they're flocked with is actually not green, it's neon yellow. And when it sits on top of the black epoxy, it turns green. To the eye. It's a bit of an optical illusion to use my colleague or director Maddie's terms. It's an optical illusion of sorts. And that's also what gives it this depth of color. The story behind the works themselves is very like mystical, very kind of stream of consciousness fairy tale that Kim's thought up and not really thought up, but more like happened across upon. Because when he started making these works, it wasn't like there was a complete direction, but a direction is emerged. They're children who were dreamt up by an initial sculpture who he calls the dreamer. And then the children dreamt up more of each other. And as this community formed, they split apart. And after a while, they realized that splitting apart and being isolated doesn't work. So they came back together, not only to one another, but back to nature which is where the moss motif comes from, which I also think is honestly a really good ethos to have today since we've traveled so far from nature as like people living in like the 21st century. But that's the, that's the vibe, that's the idea, that's the mood. And they're very charming, beautiful sculptures. That's lovely. Thank you so much for telling us yeah, about his beautiful work. Yeah, that was a pleasure getting a chance to talk with Grace about Tim Simonson's work. I really enjoyed that. We now get a chance to enter into the J. Lohman Gallery, and here we're seeing some beautiful work by Aaron Lee and also Tony Losey. Some of these beautiful sculptures really just jump out at you because you see these adorable creatures with their prickly skin and it's interesting that they're both designers from two different backgrounds but their work really rhymes with each other and next we arrive at gallery fumi in mayfair london it was established in 2008 by sam pratt and valerio capo in a recent interview they did in the financial times they mentioned how in 2008 they wanted to show designers that were undiscovered they mentioned that this approach hasn't always been easy and sometimes it takes a long time for people to get to know these artists work but they gave an example of lambs lacquered arushi pieces that were created with japanese artisans and they mentioned that when they first showed those works, nobody looked at them for two years and they didn't sell a single thing. But now they are in museums. So it was really interesting looking at the work in this booth. Now, on our way to our next gallery interview, we get a chance to stop by our and company and see some of Roberto Lugo's work. We're going to talk more about him later on. So now we've arrived at a booth that has futuristic furniture, but it's made with very natural and raw materials. It's Sarah Myerskoff Gallery, and we're able to speak with Erica Anderson. So take a listen as she tells us more about this gallery. Audience, we just left the Hoff Brothers booth, and now we get the privilege to be with Erica Anderson. She is the director over Sarah Myers Cove Gallery. And inside of this gallery, you're going to see some marvelous sculpture work, um, some linen work, and even some blip work that I've seen that just is just blowing my mind. Uh, when you look at some of the video on YouTube, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. But Erica, we're so proud to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being on Best of the Parties to Go Away. Tell us a little bit about your gallery. 
great to be here. Thanks for stopping by our booth. Um, so we are at a small gallery based out of London, and Sarah Myers Kopf has been championing master craftsmen and artists using natural materials for over 15 years, and we've seen a shift in the zeitgeist in the past five years where this master craftsmanship is really being done a lot more. And um, we're thrilled. So, so the gallery started with representing artists who worked primarily with wood. So that's why you're seeing a lot of uh, wood on our roof. We won best of show for the whole of Design Miami. So we're Beautiful. really excited about that. And it's an accolade that I think has been um, long, uh, well, hard earned position. So, so we focus on artists and perhaps people who use natural materials. So, like you said, we're, we're using, uh, our artists are using textiles, using wood, some incredible ways. Um, and they're, they're really focused on that high level of craftsmanship. And so when we're thinking about living with art, we, we, we curate with this idea of the natural ruin. Um, so pieces that are sculptural, utilitarian, somewhere in, in between. And, um, and almost everything you see here is, is 100% natural. Um, and it just feels, I mean, I have to say, it's a joy working here. Our boots always feel grounded in nature and just really, really this work. Yeah. That is amazing, Erica. And audience, once again, you're going to see some of the pictures. We'll have plenty of the links in the show's notes. But if you could go and check out this gallery online, you're going to, it's going to blow you away. Uh, it really echoes the theme throughout the theme line. So thank you so much, Erica, for joining us on the show today. Wow, it was a delight to get a chance to speak with Erica and learn more about what the Sarah Mayakovs Gallery is doing in London. We now get a chance to enter into Gallery All, and Gallery All has been always one of those galleries that we absolutely love because they feature just these phenomenal artists, for instance, like James Jean. Here we get a chance to see some of the Haas Brothers' work. Yeah, it was amazing walking into this booth that had this rich purple fabric on the wall and these mirrors that were like very weirdly shaped and the gold seemed like it was actually coming out towards you and they're known for their whimsical furniture and characters yeah it was absolutely amazing getting a chance to visit but let's listen into this discussion that we have with Lorraine Hahn of Gallery All Audience, today we have a very nice treat for you. We have Lorraine Hahn with Gallery All with us today at Design Miami. The fabulous Lorraine with us today. And we are just so excited. Today we're at the Gallery All Haas Brothers. And maybe you remember last year, we got a chance to sit down with Simon Haas of the Haas Brothers and interview him. And he gave us a really uh, nice format of his practice and he and his brother, what they actually do. They interaction with Rihanna and other celebrities. But today we want to get into a discussion with Lorraine and just ask ask her exactly what's going on at Gallery Y'all. Lorraine, welcome to the show. Hi everyone, how are you? I'm really, really happy to be here sharing our booth, um, solo representing Hass Brothers at this year's Design Miami. We are very happy that Hass Brothers is um, working with us, creating this completely new series featuring furniture pieces, mirrors, tapestries. I think we are very happy that we are able to provide the best fabrication programs that the Haas brothers are looking for to making their ideas, inspirations, um, whatever fantasies that are coming to the reality. Let me just uh, give you a little bit more intro about the different collections and, and the series that we're bringing to this Design Miami. So we are having such a hot show here at D Design Miami and a lot of people are coming to our booth 
asking us, uh, you know, about why Hass Brothers is working with us and their inspirations and how their ideas um, evolve from the nature to identities. Um, we are really happy that we can make everything happen here. And, and we also bring Zoeberg Mirrors. Um, it's um, such an amazing collection that we are so happy to show here, to show people that we are able to um, you know, cater to the brothers' needs and their inspirations. So I think the brothers are trying to make the mirrors as the portal from the room to the special moments encountered by the viewers. The glass is actually tainted uh, with a little bit uh, rosy and pinky feel, which brings the glamorous and glows on everyone who is standing in front of the mirror. Um, so it's just... I we I mean I personally really love it because it makes me feel glowing, makes me feel younger, and makes me feel that I love myself. So I think the important thing that the brothers are trying to deliver is that you have to be able to love yourself before you can love others. So I think you know through their works, we really hope that we can just you know, be, be chill, a little bit more chill and enjoy your life and find the, the childhood self and just embrace our life and love yourself more. And we're also very happy to bring two tapestries, which the Hass Brothers has never done it before. So this is their first experiment with the tapestry um, collection. And I'm very, really happy to share one of the tapestries is called Crawled Cost 2, um, which is inspired by the anime movie Luca. And the feature of this movie is hidden in the plot and the moment of realization is so stunning that it breeds the conversation about the nature of humanity with Has Sounds. We love him. Um, Has is deeply touched by the anti-discrimination and acceptance course delivered by the movie, escalating him to draw sea creatures, more spe special, specifically monsters. But in the world created by the Has brothers, alligators, sneak, you know, the creatures are not villains anymore, but something that's so playful and touches our childhood memory heart. Yeah, I, I'm really, really happy to be here sharing more about the collections, but I hope that if you, anyone coming to our booth, just come and say hi to us. The booth is actually selling very well. We have received so many compliments about this new series. It's less organic, but more elegant, but at the same time, it has the best Hass Brothers features and inspirations delivered by the pieces. And thank you so much for having me. That was fabulous, Lorraine. It was really lovely talking to Lorraine. So now things are really busy here in Design Miami, and it's like hard kind of getting to, from booth to booth. There's so many people, but we make our way over to Roberto Lugo's booth, and it's really cool because it's set up like a little corner store. Yeah, it's like a little bodega, but it's titled The Village Potter. And I absolutely love Roberto's work because he uses functional vessels to actually reinforce the argument that art is for everyone. And he does this by implementing R&B and hip hop figures into his work, along with graffiti and ancient iconography. Love his work. Thank you all for joining us for our tour of Design Miami 2022. And we really want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You could have been doing so many different things, but you're here with us. And we want to thank you for the time. Thank you so much for being a part of Vessel Art as a Doorway. <laughs>